my presentation will not be on fisheries, although my background is on fisheries. I am, am now working for Wageningen International, which is the coordinating office of our university for international cooperation. And I'm going to give you a short presentation about uh, the uh, Dutch agricultural uh, industry and especially factors that have contributed to this um, uh, industry and especially again the relationship between science and uh, government and uh, industry. So first of all, um, uh, let's have a look at um, uh, global issues around uh, animal and food. Of course, you are all involved very much in this, in, in this work and in this domain, and especially when it comes to uh, food security. Uh, this is really something that uh, a lot of people worry about. How can we feed our planet in the coming 20 or 30 years, given the population growth and given the, the already tremendous pressure on natural resources? There are a lot of challenges in that area. But um, actually, this is not only the population growth that is contributing to um, our concern about food security. Climate change uh, affects the climate change, uh, uh, like cell line uh, uh, intrusion, salinization of soils, um, adverse climate uh, conditions, storms, and so on. They even put a greater pressure on the um, few resources that we are ha having at this earth for food production. Uh, but, but it's not only about food production in terms of protein consumption and calorie consumption. Large parts of the world actually have the opposite problem, whereby uh, there is too much food, people consume too much food, relating, uh, uh, resulting in uh, all kinds of health problems, which gives a completely other dimension when we, talk to, when we think about um, food uh, uh, issues. And then, um, there is also the bio-based economy. We would like to uh, get uh, less dependent on uh, fossil fuels and change it to biofuels, uh, also bioplastics. Uh, but all these, uh, these developments put again a pressure on uh, our natural resources and on the way, on the methodology for agriculture. So within this domain, there are so many developments, and uh, you are working on that. But also, we are working on that at, at Martin University in the Netherlands. And um, this, is, um, yeah, this is my starting point, I would uh, like to say. Uh, just a, a quick step uh, to the Netherlands. But you know uh, the Netherlands is a very small country. Um, but uh, despite the fact that we are so small, we are the second largest exporter of food products in the world. Which is rather strange because how can come such a small country export so much uh, potatoes and a lot of other uh, food, food and um, horticultural products? Well, there are many contributing factors to that, and I will go into more detail um, a little bit later in this presentation. Uh, this here are just some figures uh, when it comes to uh, important products like like cheese, like um, uh, eggs, like cows, like um, um, uh, trade, in food and food. But I have a short uh, video, which is more uh, easier um, explaining the situation. Um, The planet where 7.1 million people live their daily lives, work, love, and eat. The Netherlands, a small country, one of the most densely populated areas in the world, and yet, the second largest food exporting country worldwide. A substantial part of the total economy, and still growing. The numbers are impressive and the regional impact huge. And produce from the Netherlands, like seeds, is highly appreciated. How can it be that such a small country is the second exporter worldwide? One of the secrets to success is Wageningen UR. The Wageningen campus is where government, science and business meet and turn knowledge into smart applications that improve the quality of life. 
Through the combination of fundamental and applied research, far-fetched ideas became reality, such as the energy-efficient greenhouses that use geothermal energy and solar heat. Technical, economic and social disciplines collaborate to find and develop more sustainable and animal-friendly systems. And new industries like the bio-based economy find their roots in Wagenheim. You want to know more? Visit us at the campus or online. Now, this is, uh, of course, uh, one of the aspects, but in general, I, I most um, I people agree that the basis of uh, agricultural development in the Netherlands is uh, on of the, uh, the close relation, the close interaction between the government, science, and entrepreneurs, farmers, companies in the agro and food, uh, companies supplying uh, inputs, fertilizers, feeds, and so on. And these three blocks, yeah, we call it the triangle, the golden triangle, but then it's just uh, is the word. But this, this kind of cooperation is, uh, I think, one of the contributing factors. And, um, to give you some, some example of that, I mean, this is not something that uh, has been there in, in the last two or three years. Actually, after the Second World War, when we uh, needed to build up our country again, and whereby uh, we were short, facing a lot of uh, food shortages, uh, actually, the, the origin of this model uh, dates from that period. And it is not only the government that is putting money into uh, scientific research, but it is the government also who is trying to facilitate the development of the agriculture sector with, um, uh, uh, say, legislation, for example, but also with um, 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 their financial instruments they have available, um, using them in such a way that uh, the science being developed is not just for science, but science is for the, uh, the total society. And the very important role of the entrepreneurs. Um, one example of that, for example, is the, is the fact that um, of the, the program that we call um, uh, farmers groups, knowledge groups. Farmers um, in various different sectors are organized in, in groups. And usually the, the advanced farmers are participating in these groups. In these groups, there are also scientists. And um, around a certain topic, farmers discuss their, their situation, uh, identify possible uh, areas for solutions. Through uh, the government, money is available to carry out immediately a small research project, which is not done at, at some kind of isolated laboratory, but is usually done on farm or in close cooperation with the farmers, uh, meaning that the uh, output of that research comes back to the farmers say, within six months. Uh, this is just one example. I mean, this is small, but it also goes um, extends to um, very large cooperation programs whereby a number of, uh, for example, companies uh, that are working for, uh, in, in the dairy sector, for example, work together with um, uh, research staff uh, doing projects uh, of uh, 10 or 20 million euros. So it can be from small to big, but the principle is still the same. We have um, uh, scientists, we have entrepreneurs, and we have the government working together in public private partnership research. Um, and, and, and I, what we are trying nowadays when we talk about um, as a, our international program, we are trying to use as much as possible the same model, whereby we try to involve um, also uh, in our overseas research programs as much as possible, not only the scientific part, the scientific research institutes, but at the same time uh, the local entrepreneurs and the local um, agro food companies and uh, also the local government. Um, and uh, we see that this model works not only in the Netherlands but also in, in many other countries. Well, just to come back here a little bit to uh, uh, the Dutch uh, animal food industry, it's uh, not only about production, or our productivity is very high, but that's not the only contributing factor to the success of uh, Dutch uh, animal food. 
it is um, also very much uh, um, related towards uh, um, adding value to products, um, towards um, quality and health aspects of foods are nowadays um, equally important as, as just the, the proteins and the calories of the food. It's also about, of course, uh, resource efficiency, especially, um, for example, in the research program that we are doing in uh, greenhouse horticulture, a lot of emphasis is, uh, or actually was, on energy consumption in those greenhouses because you, you know that uh, our winter conditions are not that severe, but anyway, winter uh, can be uh, cold, uh, temperatures uh, around zero, for example. But still, we can produce um, the tomatoes and the scabbers and the flowers in these greenhouses. Uh, but that costs a lot of energy in the past, at least, for, for heating and for lighting. But um, as a through uh, collaborative research with companies that construct greenhouses, farmers and uh, our scientists, we actually have developed now a horticulture system that not uh, costs energy but that produces energy. Uh, and it works in, in such a way that during summertime, when actually there's a lot of solar radiation and a lot of heat being built up within uh, the greenhouse, in the past days, uh, the, uh, the greenhouse, they needed to open the windows and the heat escape. But nowadays we develop a system whereby the heat actually is captured. It's put uh, into uh, groundwater resources where the heat is stored. And in the winter time it's pumped up again and the heat, which is still there, is being used to, to warm the, the greenhouse. Um, another example is in this respect is the use of lightning. Nowadays we are not um, using say, ordinary lights anymore, but we are using different lens with different frequencies adapted to the needs of particular plants. Um, but also what's very important is uh, logistics. And the Netherlands in that, from that point of view has a, has a good position because uh, we are at the delta of the uh, number of rivers. We have a very big port, uh, the infrastructure is developed. So trading is very important which makes uh, it's possible that a lot of goods are imported and re-exported or are produced in the Netherlands and exported uh, to many other countries. So everything related to Afrolos logistics, how to keep your products fresh, how to transport them um, uh, without uh, uh, having very high costs is the are important research areas for us. For example, when it comes to flowers, you know, we produce a lot of flowers in the Netherlands. Uh, they used to be transported by uh, air freight, which is possibly nowadays um, a methodology has been designed in such a way that the flowers can be transported by boat. But at the same time, when they arrive at the country of destination, uh, they are still in the same good condition. So um, certification, of course, of that import, sustainability uh, uh, is concern for consumers, for big retailers, so everything which is related to sustainability, sustainability labels, uh, requires uh, research, and, and we are involved in that. Um, another issue is animal welfare. I don't know whether that's an issue here in the Philippines, but in, 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 in the Netherlands in Europe, and these people are um, they having uh, second thoughts about the way how we keep livestock high densities and uh, like in some situations uh, our, our cattle actually is not uh, being uh, let out of the stables and uh, graze on, on the fields but they are fed inside because more as uh, economically and of course this is uh, society concerns about it which makes that um, um, we do research on those issues so behavior of uh, animals in the respiratory conditions is an important research area. And it even goes that far that uh, we also do this research on fish, uh, how fish are behaving in tanks, how can we measure the um, uh, stress levels in fish. That is also part of our research. Um, yeah, and, and, and what's, what's also, of course, is, is a very important development, especially I think in Asia, whereby you see um, uh, urbanization uh, and, and growth of cities, more and more people living in cities, uh, is such an important issue here. 
Uh, and then the question comes, um, how uh, can we bring food to the cities? Or is there a possibility to, to produce food within the cities? And well, actually, we see two developments there. There is a trend for, uh, towards um, uh, say a very small scale kind of agriculture in cities whereby people grow vegetables and, and, and fruits uh, on rooftops, for example, or big buildings. Uh, but more on say economical scale, we see the, the development of uh, apple parks, whereby on a kind of like industrial area, crops, livestock, and fish and processing is being uh, developed uh, on an integrated way, in such a way that, that uh, the, uh, the rest products of one particular agro uh, sector can be used as inputs for the next one, recycling of waste. Uh, on, on a large scale uh, is possible, which of course has a whole lot of benefit when it comes to sustainability. Okay, well then let's have a, a, a look at, at, at science. Um, we have to go back in history, like right? in the Middle Ages, uh, universities were actually there just for education. We wanted to have uh, say the best education to go to the university, and there were professors teaching certain subjects. Um, later, later in time, you saw uh, what we call second generation, second generation uh, university, whereby um, education, of course, was still there, but research uh, came attached to it, and the the, the practice of doing research was part of the, uh, the overall uh, curriculum of the university. And at, at, at that time, it not always mattered very much what kind of research uh, you were doing. And, and nowadays, we are talking about the research generation of universities, whereby um, and science actually can only take place if it has an impact. So a science for impact, impact for society. We do science because we um, there are a number of uh, societal ch uh, challenges that need to be addressed and science can contribute to uh, finding solutions for those problems. And, and when you talk about this kind of third generation and diversity, it's very important to, uh, <coughs> to uh, have uh, or to control the, the whole um, uh, chain from, from fundamental research to uh, applied research and towards valorization of research. And um, nowadays we see that, that more and more universities are taking this approach, whereby, like for example, in our university, fundamental um, uh, research and the outcome of that is being used by another group within the university to make it into uh, uh, solutions that can be applied by the users, by society, by government, or by, by industry. So this is what we call a science uh, with impact. But it is, it's, 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 of course, it's not only about technology, uh, <coughs> because um, we do it for the society. So the um, uh, socio-economic uh, component, when it comes to uh, this uh, integrated research, is, uh, is equally important um, as the technical component. So multidisciplinary um, um, projects are, are really important. We, we don't see uh, actually almost not anymore that there are few, few technical projects being done at, uh, at universities. It's always trying to do as much as possible interdisciplinary with socioeconomic as an important uh, area. Now, um, if you allow me, I would like to give you a little bit more background than of Wageningen uh, University, where I work for. Um, this is our, our mission statement, which for the potential need to improve the quality of life. And, and now I look at the picture, picture it reminds me of my, my way of coming here, because this forest looks very much similar like the forest that you have here in the background, in this very beautiful, beautiful campus. Um, so, we are uh, quite a, a special university because we, we only have one faculty, 
Faculty of um, uh, Agriculture. So if you want to study law or economics, you can't do that at uh, Atlanta University. But with, within uh, our domain, uh, we are very, very broad. We have, uh, say, um, cluster around food and food production, which is agriculture, but also the fisheries. Uh, it's about uh, biomass, etc. But uh, of course, equally important is the environment, the living environment. So production needs to be done in harmony with the environment. That's why we have all the disciplines related to uh, the land and water management, uh, um, marine resource management, nature, biodiversity. And uh, the third pillar is, of course, people, um, uh, health, life, lifestyle. Um, one of the research areas, for, for example, in, in that uh, domain is the relationship between food and uh, health can be modified across in such a way that they are uh, becoming more healthy, for example, by having more vitamins, uh, but also uh, how does uh, food consumption in generally affect uh, our health. Um, well, these are some data about uh, about uh, our university. So, this is the Netherlands, and the Rijnland is Wageningen. Uh, it's a small town where, where the university is situated. But of course, we have a number of other um, uh, places where there are research stations. Um, it, uh, this is interesting, although it seems uh, uh, a little bit uh, dull, but. Our, our university is organized uh, in, uh, say, two ways. Now, first of all, uh, we call it Wageningen UI, University and Research Center. And how the, the block is the university, which is doing education, MSc, PhD, postdoc, <coughs> fundamental research. And the other half are a number of specialized research institutes so doing the applied research. Uh, but in order to, uh, say, enhance the interaction between fundamental and applied research, we have these uh, vertical organizations because we have um, five different science groups. We have the uh, agro technology and food science group, the animal science group, environmental science, plant science, and social science. So through this organization, we force researchers to cooperate together. We, we don't like to see fundamental research being done in one particular laboratory, and then somewhere else in the university, they are working on the same problem, and they don't know that from the sun. So that's why we have this model. Um, Give you a bit more background. We, we are an international university, um, especially uh, the master. The master is in English, of course, and 45% of our students uh, come from outside the Netherlands, and the PhD is uh, even more. And uh, we are quite lucky, uh, we are very popular because, uh, well, I think in relation to the University of the Philippines, we are still small, but we uh, we grown quite fast, and we have, we have now uh, in 2015 indeed more than 10,000 uh, students. Well, this is a little bit small, but um, I will give you the uh, PDF later on. But, but these are all our um, uh, bachelor's and master um, say, uh, courses that you can follow. And again, you will see the three domains, the production, the environment, and the, uh, the social. And you'll see that actually there are also a lot that are in the, uh, say, uh, the area between those two or three domains. And uh, I think we can also consider ourselves as a typical research university because well, normally you would expect this kind of, kind of triangle whereby you have a lot of PSC, uh, lesser MSc, and a few PSC, but, but we have an equal number of MSc, PSC, and a rather large number of PSC students. So um, 
that makes it uh, like a typical research university. And when it comes to ranking, international ranking, uh, we are always ranked in Android food and biosciences as a possible point nine. Um, we, we have a lot of international projects all over the world. Uh, not that many in the Philippines, unfortunately, but I hope that uh, we can uh, enhance our cooperation a little bit. Um, uh, this is a picture of our campus. This is not a new campus, which we are still uh, developing. And uh, for the campus, again, we, we are very much focusing on, on this model government, science, and industry, but also at the campus, we don't have just our own research facilities, but uh, uh, we create a lot of possibilities for companies to establish themselves at the campus. Uh, uh, we would like to, to attract uh, the major uh, IT companies to have their R&D facilities uh, at, us, at our campus, either by setting up their own facility or uh, uh, using our facility. Because again, if you are close by, you will automatically uh, uh, work uh, better together, uh, which will make sure that the outcome of research has an impact for society. And uh, this is not only a matter of creating space, but uh, we have uh, special facilities, uh, for example, uh, uh, with, um, a facility which is called uh, uh, Start Line, whereby uh, students that are in the uh, final year of their uh, MSc program and that have an idea that they want to uh, further develop, make a true, true setting of their own company, um, they are very, very supported by our university. Their staff guiding them to develop business plans. Uh, they get a, a kind of small capital, like a few thousands of euros from the university to invest in their company. There are facilities available for them, like uh, 3D printers, etc., which you can uh, make use of uh, free of charge. And we continue to guide them uh, even uh, after they graduate and they really set up their company. Uh, so this is on the say on, on the small side, on the, on the student side, but also we uh, we have building whereby um, there are experimental facilities available, office space available for. Um, companies that want to uh, set up office in Wageningen. And again, it, this is not just because we want to uh, get money because we sell uh, uh, these, these facilities. That is not the point. The point here is that we want to attract these companies in order to have a link between science and industry. And it's not only national, also international uh, companies are um, uh, established at uh, our campus. Well, when it comes to international collaboration, um, well, actually, uh, you can consider, um, uh, for example, collaboration between uh, two scientific institutes. Um, you can uh, have collaboration between uh, science and industry and between science and, and uh, law members. Uh, but again, we, we would like to combine it in involving also uh, and the stakeholders all together. And this is, this, is the, this is the way how we usually cooperate. There are, are I'd say, three elements that are essential for uh, a successful international cooperation. First of all, um, we should find a topic that is relevant for, for humans for us. Uh, that is the most important step. Then, we would like to uh, have that this topic has some added benefit to, uh, for us and for you. I mean, added benefit, I mean, in this case, it should uh, uh, give maybe possibilities for scientific communication, or it should give uh, access to infrastructure or uh, facilities that that you don't have or that we don't have, or networks that you don't have or we don't have. So there should be some kind of added value. And the third uh, pillar is that uh, the project should be clear in terms of activity 
uh, as persons and how strong will be uh, organized and trying to find this. Well, this is a few examples. How do we cooperate? Well, uh, uh, when it comes to, say, more science-to-science -science cooperation, of course, there is a, a lot of cooperation in uh, student, student uh, exchange, in uh, PhD work, campus PhD work, whereby part of the research is done in another, another part, um, for example, in the Philippines. Uh, postdocs, uh, a lot of international postdocs, postdocs in Latin. And then when it comes to the um, more applied research institutes, um, there are um, as a um, program which I modeled in the consultancy to have a capacity build, training, etc. and to uh, contract research. Well, this was just a, a short uh, introduction to um, the Netherlands and to uh, the Amazon food towards the um, importance of cooperation between science, industry, and government, and some more background information of uh, our university. So, if you have any questions, uh, please ask me. Thank you very much, Dr. Rodriguez. Yes. Uh, the floor is now open for questions, comments, or insights uh, from the audience, please. Any questions? Yes, Dr. Uh, just intrigued by your, uh, your vision or uh, your uh, model as the university okay. to explore the potential of nature of the food to what you want. We think. I take note of the word explore. I think in, in our country, it is still exploit the potential of nature. We have not developed a culture by which uh, we have to just explore the potential. It, it means we don't have to destroy it or exploit it. But uh, you know, this is the root of this is biblical. <coughs> God created earth. He said to have dominion over the uh, uh, over the earth. So uh, uh, what I'm driving at is, uh, if you look at the Philippines and Netherlands, and uh, the kind of agriculture and uh, food programs that we have uh, is a way farther apart. Uh, not because we do not know how to do it, but uh, the obstacles are huge. Uh, the Netherlands is a single landmass. Uh, it is not visited by you know, natural disasters. And uh, it is also unfortunate that we have been uh, colonized by uh, countries in which the principle is not explore but rather exploit. And I think that has been ingrained into our culture. It is very difficult to change. So, uh, Netherlands has uh, a very highly developed system of governance, a highly developed infrastructure, and we compare that to our country, is rather difficult. So while we understand the uh, linkage between science, government, and uh, the entrepreneurs, uh, it is very difficult for us to be able to link this simply because of the kind of infra infrastructure that we have, you know, the political infrastructure, physical infrastructure. But uh, nevertheless, it's 
this could serve as a model for us, at least first to be able to develop our own university curriculum so that we can uh, uh, adapt this particular principle. Right now, our curricula uh, does not emphasize entrepreneurship. Uh, our curricula is basically very academic uh, and it will take us to change our curricular programs to be able really to uh, adapt that kind of uh, thinking. Now, uh, my question has to do with uh, your uh, spin-off as uh, a component of the whole system uh, from uh, research and then the speeding of innovation in entrepreneurship into a particular uh, uh, enterprise. How do you do that? Well, thank uh, you. Thank you also for your other comments. Uh, I realize that, that, that I mean, this is just an example of independence. I don't know the situation in the Philippines, so I can imagine that there are uh, complicated factors. Um, but um, to come back to your uh, specific questions uh, on the uh, way how we work with companies. Um, what you see most of the time when we when we are talking about a, a project that, that is based on say PPP, whereby all the three departments are involved, and usually um, and the, the entrepreneur private sector are uh, several companies um, uh, participating in this project. But the question is of course these companies, for example, if it is a project for example on, on dairy, uh, then uh, or on, on animal feed you will see that there are a number of companies participating in this project, but at the same time, these companies are also competing. You know, they are all producing, for example, feed. Um, but the trick then is that the research that's being done is, is what, we, what we call in, in the pre competitive phase. So the outcome of that research is not uh, directly um, um, benefiting one particular company. Uh, and that makes them willing to cooperate in such a program and financing this kind of cooperation. Uh, on the other side, we also have um, uh, a lot of projects directly one-to-one -one between one particular um, uh, science group and one particular institute with one particular company. And this research is usually uh, confidential. It means that we do not publish it uh, immediately, but we, we agree that we wait for some two years before we publish the results. Or some situation will never be perfect. Um, and that, that is really contract research um, for product development, for example. Is that answering your question? Uh, my understanding is that. Uh, Dr. Arbel, can I use the mic? My understanding is that uh, you have, you know, you have research and could be turned into an innovation. Yes. And then could be taken advantage of to develop an enterprise. Now, uh, how do you finance that? Yeah, but that is, um, that is a good point. Um, that's where the government comes in. Because if we talk about the PPP program in the pre competitive phase, the government provides uh, money. But what they do is they say, we will give you uh, half of the money and the other parties that are participating in this project should uh, bring in the other half. And the reason they say that is because they want that their research money is being utilized for projects that are of relevance, either for companies or for uh, other governments or for society in general. So that's why they don't make a lot of sense. So each has to, each has to contribute towards financing this project. Yes, Dr. Nancy. Good morning. I'm Nancy uh, from the College of Arts and Sciences. Well, the Spanish and Wagner have a very long history 
of collaboration, starting from uh, the 70s, uh, nutrition program, and then in the 80s, modeling program for 10 years. Uh, and I know very well your rector, uh, Martin Trump. We used to work together. And uh, well, as UPLB is getting up to be a research university and also a graduate university, I wonder uh, if we can further explore the potential of leveling up the collaboration to uh, maybe food security, uh, maybe other programs where UPLB has actually uh, uh, prepared. We have established uh, a number of interdisciplinary centers, and we hope uh, we can explore the collaboration with Bagnet and uh, advanced research institutes uh, in the near future. So uh, I appreciate very much your visit here, and perhaps later on we can discuss and uh, extend my regards to Martin. Okay. Yes, yes, please. Uh, we really would like to uh, 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 give green time to because I, I think in the past there were several uh, uh, collaborative projects between your university and ours, and then it uh, uh, decreased a little bit. But, but we are really uh, open towards meeting uh, you and getting more uh, cooperation. Going on. So, so I'm here still for two hours, so maybe you can finish it. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Myra Rubinia from the FA Rights, the Human Rights Research Institute. <coughs> One of your slides showed that the Center of Excellence is in Chile, and the other two is in other developing countries. Why is that so, and how effective is the strategy of the Center of Excellence in those places? That is a very good question. And, uh, in fact, uh, we, we have two models. We have uh, representative offices, meaning that there is staff providing uh, uh, UR at that particular office. And those ones we have uh, only two one in, uh, one in Beijing and the other one in uh, Addis Ababa, which is Ethiopia. And the reason for, for that last one is because. Um, we have, and we are still doing uh, very large programs uh, in Ethiopia uh, when it comes to uh, security, and also there are a number of regional uh, uh, programs going on. And the second uh, model is um, uh, project offices in, in some countries where we have a lot of projects. Like in Chile, we are um, having a center of excellence for food processing, and there's one person from Wahini who are permanently, but actually she's uh, in charge of the project, but at the same time she is uh, having a kind of representative function. A uh, similar uh, situation we have in Dhaka, as well as in, uh, in Zambia. Um, when it comes to Asia, we, uh, outside uh, the two countries I mentioned, have a very close collaboration with the Nanking Technical University of Singapore. Uh, last year we, we started um, two joint uh, MSc courses on food and food uh, processing. And, and we will need to develop further on. Yes. towards your uh, partners of the entrepreneurs. And another question is that if Unilever is a Dutch company, how much collaboration do you have with them? Well, uh, the first question is how much the, the Dutch ministry of agriculture contributes to our university? No, yes. no, to the farmers. Because you just... Oh, to the farmers? Yeah, to the farmers or the entrepreneurs. Oh. Yeah, well, uh, that question is not easy to answer because, uh, say, within uh, the European uh, Union, there is a common uh, agricultural policy and also a common fisheries policy, meaning that um, when it comes to, uh, for example, government subsidiaries, this all has to fit within the European framework. The Netherlands is not allowed to um, uh, subsidize uh, certain farmers on its own. It has to fit. Uh, within European regulations. And uh, well, this is a whole framework of, 
of subsidiaries, of uh, say limitations in, in terms of amount of manure that uh, is being put on, on the soil, for example, on prices, on, on so many things. Food security. That, that is a very complicated system. But and generally, the policy nowadays is that uh, if it comes to um, subsidiaries go, coming, uh, going directly to farmers, for example, for, for milk or for, for maize or wheat, this whole system is being uh, uh, gradually abandoned. For example, uh, next year the subsidiary uh, on milk will stop, uh, but also the limitations on milk production will stop, meaning that in some countries, uh, Farmers will probably shift from dairy to something else, and the expectations are that in the Netherlands, if dairy will grow. Anyway, that's the second question. Sorry, what was your second question again? You mean that? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, well, it's the uh, most national, uh, but uh, I think originally it was Dutch, but actually, I, I don't know, know exactly the, the projects that we do with Unilever, but I'm quite sure there are a number of projects. Well, can you tell us how Wageningen uh, University translates the title to explore the potential of nature to improve quality of life within this triangular strategy into its teaching and learning philosophy and approaches? I'm sure you are faced with many challenges. And, uh, can you share uh, with us these challenges? Well, uh, yeah, I can share you uh, some of them. <coughs> well, for example, I, I showed you the um, past uh, increase in the number of students. Um, one of the reasons that we uh, are yeah, successfully and very well appreciated by, by our students is that there is a close interaction between the teachers and the students. Uh, groups are small, uh, students know uh, all the te teachers individually and they have easy access to them. Uh, but of course, uh, this um, can change if the number of students grows faster than the number of staff. And uh, in fact, at this moment, we uh, cannot increase our staff because we don't have the financial means to employ more staff members. At the same time, the students are increasing, so this gives tension not only on this interaction, but also on the use of facilities. Um, we are now in, in, in the process whereby we are developing a new campus and relocating old buildings and constructing new buildings. But as a consequence of this past increase of students, we were forced to um, maintain some of the old buildings and use them as teaching facilities because we don't have enough space. That's one example. And another challenge is the fact that um, the Dutch government um, uh, and, and many governments in Europe actually they are continuously cutting budgets 
um, not only for R&D, but also for, for example, for development cooperation, uh, meaning that um, for us, um, if we want to maintain our say, portfolio of uh, research projects, more and more we need to look for other partners than, than the Dutch government, because the financial limitations are more severe than the